Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma. I'm Nick and today we are talking about the most important thing that nobody wants to talk about. Hello and welcome to Illumination Podcast with Nick and Kisma, bringing you ancient wisdom for modern day success so that you can have the mindset to get your life and business set. As always, thank you for tuning in. And if you're new to the podcast, take a quick second to hit the subscribe button in iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. Uh, if you want to get the inside info for this and every episode, as well as some free gifts, go to illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. And now let's dive in to get your mindset for your life and business set. Are we going to get weird, Kisma? Uh, I don't know. Are we? <laughs> I think we're always weird. Hi. <laughs> it's good to be here. How are you today? I am good. We're talking about something important that nobody wants to talk about, but is a really important thing, especially if you're on any sort of spiritual journey, personal growth journey, success journey, you got to get this you got to get this under control. You got to get this under control. If you're just on a want to be a little bit happier journey, mm -hmm. this, this is actually really important. If for you want to be not stressed journey, this is important. Yeah, it's that important. It's something that this was uh, this was inspired actually by another one of the, the mystics messages for self love. Uh, this one came later, later in the course, uh, but it's talking, but basically we're talking about the spiritual journey for one. Um, but also one of the biggest inhibitors that is something that by its very nature is something that we just don't typically talk about. Mm -hmm. and don't really share in an open way about how this comes up. So oh, where to begin on this kind of a big topic. Should we just tell it what it is? So what we're talking about today is shame. Shame. And the ways that we have, you know, used shame, mm -hmm. what the role that it plays in our lives, and also how to really start acknowledging it and and dealing with it in our lives mm -hmm. in, in a in a healthy way. Right. Okay. So I get it, you know, take a deep breath if that word makes you uncomfortable or anything like that. But it's like we said, it, it really is one of the most important things. And we're going to detail why, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of throughout this conversation to, to just to help everybody understand like mm -hmm. how very important this conversation is. I think it's important to look at when shame starts to occur in someone's life. And I think for me and hundreds of people that I've talked to, it occurs very early. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and and in adult life, when we hold shame, it's this feeling that we're not a good person. We're not, a, if there's shame, and all we have to do is reference David Hawkins' power versus force frequency chart, and shame is at the bottom. It's the very lowest frequency. Yeah. So even if we're running little seeds of shame or, you know, vibrations of shame, it's, it pulls one down. And yet oftentimes it's first instilled or poured into us or shown us or taught us trying to keep us safe, you know, from parents or teachers. It's like, you're supposed to do this. Don't do that. And if you do that, you're bad. And then all of a sudden there's this painting of shame on the child. Yeah. It ties in really closely with guilt mm -hmm. and the, the guilt mechanism to control behavior. Mm -hmm. Right. So guilt is the thing that is used to have you do the good things and don't do the bad things. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like you do the good things, you're good. Okay. That it reflects directly on your person. Yeah. On that, acts too. That, that's how we're taught, you know? Yeah. So when you do the good things, you're a good person. Mm -hmm. When you do the bad things, you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not necessary. Well, sometimes it actually is said to people that directly, but mostly it's more of sort of an underlying thing. Mm -hmm. And you're in most people, most people who, who, who's most people's parents 
well, I love you. No, like somewhere in there is, well, I love you no matter what, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like you, they hear that message too. But at the same time, there's this whole guilt kind of shame thing about like, oh, you did the bad things, you're bad, mm-hmm. right? So, so it's a mixed message to start with. And the shame is something that's put on to suppress that part of- The shame on you. That's right. The shame on you. Just think about what that does shame energetically. Yeah. Like stay small, stay there. Don't do that. How could you ask for it? Shame on you for asking for so much. That's right. Shame on you for thinking that's yours. Yeah. Shame on you for eating that last piece of cake. Like, I mean, the list goes on because it becomes a habitual way of being. That's right. And then in school and in church and in temples and wherever there's religion, I think there is guilt for sure. Um, and some shame. Yeah. The, the, but that's the controlling mechanism. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's how like, it's really hard to control human beings, mm-hmm. but if you can get them to control themselves and, and have that be aligned with, with your values, then you've got a really power, then you've got the power. Right. Okay. So here's all these things that I want people to do and that I don't want people to do. Like I, I, if I have to go and reinforce and and enforce all of that behavior with these people, I can't do it. But if I can get them to buy into it and do it themselves, Mm -hmm. then we're golden. Yeah. And that's how guilt is used. Right. Do these things. You're good. Don't do these things. Right. Yeah. And and if you do the bad things and you have this horrible feeling of guilt Mm -hmm. and I mean, we, I I don't know. I I know this one really well. I'm sure a lot of people have this experience, but that like guilt is, it's like a gnawing inside Mm -hmm. of you. And then there's a voice inside too. The voice comes with it. The feeling of constriction comes with it. The not good enough, not enough, not deserving. It will bleed through every area of your life. It's, it's a big deal. Yeah. So I think one of the first steps in just kind of understanding this is, is recognizing that it's something that basically everybody has some level of this and the degree to which you have it will determine like just how suppressed those parts of you are Mm. and how much how suppressed your personality is Mm -hmm. so you think about it like if you're ashamed of of who you are if you're ashamed of you know how you look you're you're gonna let's go with that one like your Mm -hmm. body shame right that's an important Mm -hmm. one so if you've got body shame you're you're gonna wear you're gonna make sure that you wear a certain kind of clothes that either cover that up or mask it in some way right you're gonna make sure that you go you don't wear certain things you're gonna make sure that you don't go into certain places looking a certain way you're probably gonna when you take videos and like you see all of your behavior is controlled right by this idea that your body doesn't look the way that you want it to and trying to hide. And therefore and, you're bad because of that. That's right. Mm. So either hide and or manipulate that image so that you can show what you want to the world. Yeah, we don't want that. So think about the mental gymnastics that you have to go through in order to do yeah. that. But that's, and that's just a, I'm not even going down the rabbit hole with that. Like that's well, just a few simple examples. I mean, examples. all we have to do is look at social media and what people are doing with, Images and filters and things and right. I I mean it's it's it, out of hand. It, it is well, it's on steroids now on social mm-hmm. media. But this is nothing new. You know, right. this is as old as humanity. Mm-hmm. Um, people have been doing this. You know, it, and so how does this relate then to this spiritual journey of exiting out of this shame? Okay. Because I think there's a lot of spiritual journeys that continue to hold shame. Well, it's a yeah. false spiritual journey. Yeah, yeah. It, it, whether, huh, this is a big topic. It's certainly embedded, obviously, into many of the world's religions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whether they're teaching it overtly or, or covertly, it, it exists in the religions. But just because you go all new age hippie mm-hmm. doesn't mean that that you're out of that paradigm. Right. Okay. Because I see it just as much there. Mm -hmm. Now it's not the, 
you know, the, the person who's, uh, sinning, quote unquote sinning, right. It's mm-hmm. the person who's like, yo, you've got the negative energy. Right? Yeah. You've got the negative you, energy. You I know, love that one, you know, oh, you're, you're, you know, who do you think you are? Negative energy yeah, bundle. <laughs> your crystals or your, your crystals are all messy or your chakras are all unbalanced. You yeah. Know? I love that when your chakras are blocked. Yeah. How would you know? And it's like, now it's like, then it go, gets into that. And then people have, I remember this in one of my, when I first sat down with like a really highly clairvoyant person, I felt like scared, mm-hmm. like, like, oh man, like I know this person can see those kinds of things. Like what, the, what are they seeing on me? Mm, shame. Yeah, there was some shame it's there. Chakra shame. For sure. I mean, that was <laughs> chakra shame. Chakra shame, right? Hashtag got chakra shame. <laughs> but it, it, no, but that, I mean, I remember that experience. I was like, oh man, you know, this is like, what are they going to see? There was, mm-hmm. I had shame. This was many mm-hmm. years ago, but I had shame around that, you know, mm-hmm. and then anxiety as well. Of like, oh, what are they going to see? Mm-hmm. And, you know, you look at social media and it's just like, it's just jacked that up. Yeah. You know? But getting back to the religion, you see, like, it's not a matter of just within a religious context or out of it. Mm -hmm. Shame is something you have to look at it in a human context. Right. And it it is in the most simple way, shame is the thing that we use that covers up and suppresses our personality. Mm -hmm. It's the mask that we put on to hide those parts and to show to the world what we have decided for ourselves is good and worthy of showing to the world. So it's not about being flawed or not being flawed. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can, you, there's a paradoxical conversation about this of on the one hand, you're innately perfect. And and on the other hand, you're irrevocably human, you know, (laughs) Mm -hmm. with all of our idiosyncrasies. So if you, if you go straight to the perfect part, right, we're, we're innately perfect. The shame is the thing that covers that up. Mm-hmm. It, it covers up our humanness. And and when you cover up your humanness, you never have a chance to get to the essence of your being. No. Because you just can't face it. So self-love is a long way off. It's impossible from that, yeah. from that kind of, so, so long as you're holding that, you, it's impossible. True love for another human is impossible. Well, yeah, because you're, uh, they're not really loving you. Right. They're loving what, you know, what little pieces of yourself you've decided to show them. And if you're, if one is in shame of self, they can't fully love another person. That's right. Because that energy is going to go through the lens of shame. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, your relationship with other people is only ever going to be as good mm-hmm. as your relationship with yourself. Mm-hmm. This is or so or true. as honest, I guess as is honest, a better way yeah. to put it, you know. So it's like taking off the clothes. Yep, it is. It's like taking off the layers, the untruths. Spiritual, spiritual development is, especially these days with the internet, and, and the access to information that we have is, is about, has, has become about gaining knowledge mm-hmm. and it's upside down. Like the formula is upside down. You need knowledge, right? But, but go back to that essence of your being, the perfection of your being. So the truth is that you already have it, but it's covered by all yeah. the, it's covered up. So it's revealing it. It's covered up by all the things. So the real essence of a spiritual practice in my mind is not about getting anything. It's about losing everything. It's about yeah, losing what is not true. Yeah. yeah all of the untruths. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that could be lies that you told about yourself, you know, the lies that you're telling yourself. About the lies yourself. that you took on from someone else. That's the, right. The whole thing. Yeah. Every belief and paradigm that is not in sync with a true spiritual heart and mind has to be taken away. Yes. That's what it's really about. I heard this uh, in Swamiji's lecture this morning. He's, I'm in one of the Upanishads with him and he said something is totally paraphrased because it was so eloquent when he said it, but every problem, you know, he, he's talking to the masses, but he's like you and it's directly to me. He's like, every problem you have is because you don't understand your true self. It's basically, you don't understand that you're Brahmin. You're the Atman to the Brahmin. Every problem you have is because you do not understand that. And I was like, damn. Yeah. That's, that's totally it. And every time we don't like understand that, we can look at it. It's a layer of untruth. It's a layer of guilt. It's a layer of shame. Yeah. 
we're ashamed of our ignorance. Yeah, yeah. And especially in a world that's very brainy, like very mm-hmm. much about like figuring things out with your mind. Mm-hmm. Like when you don't know something, that's a very dangerous place it, to be, you know, in, in, in a, from that perspective, right? Yeah, don't make it wrong, you're saying. Well, in reality, it's like your, ignorant, your ignorance actually sets you free mm-hmm. um, in, a, in a weird kind of way. But, uh, but, but from that perspective, it's like, man, if I don't know the right answers here, uh, this is not safe for me. Right. Right. And so, and to be seen as ignorant or mm-hmm. stupid or, or something knowing. like, yeah, like that's then you shame, right? Mm-hmm. Shame, shame, shame. So we see this a lot. You know, one of the examples I think that really comes out to me is uh, uh, with the ultimate life tool, mm-hmm. the, Joe, the there's a processor that thinks more slowly mm-hmm. and Absorptive. absorbs more mm-hmm. slowly. Mm-hmm. So there's ones that are just like really, really fast. There's another one that's just a processor that's just like a pass through, you know, so you just get the information, you got it, and then it's, it's gone. But this this particular processor thinks more slowly and absorbs more slowly. And people who have that and need more time to actually absorb information feel ashamed that they need to take time to absorb the information. I've heard, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say that. I'm like, dude, it, like you're making it wrong. But let me tell you that once that information is in there, it's in there for good. And they, they're like, yeah, you're right. Like yeah. it totally is. But man, getting it there. And I'm like, that's just because you're fighting against yourself. Yeah. Resisting. And it's a huge, yeah, the resistance, mm-hmm. you're right, is it's a mm-hmm. huge paradigm shift for them because they get to, they get to actually see like, oh, there's a gift to this. Because, mm-hmm. y- you know, then you contrast that with somebody like me who doesn't have like that at all. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got a delete button in my brain. So you do forget things. <laughs> I, like purposefully and not purposefully sometimes, you know, like, like there's that one processor that just, you know, like the, it's just there and gone. And then there's the other one that's just like, yeah, that is not relevant. Delete, yeah, you know, that, it's just gone. Like it's just gone from my brain, you know, but the people with that other kind of processor, they don't do that. Yeah. You know, they'll remember everything. Yeah. You know, that's true. That's really true. Yeah. You know, if you have shame around just, just the way you are as a human being, can't do it. You're can't just going to carry it with that. And then you're going to make it wrong and then you're going to cover it up and then you're going to try to be different. Mm -hmm. And that's the worst thing that you can do because it takes you further away from the essence and the truth of who you are. You got to live according to your own master credo, as Vadim Zalin would say. That's right. And you're never going to get this. I'm getting all fired up now. Like you're never going to get to the essence and core of your spiritual being by trying to be somebody else. This is absolutely true. You, You can't get there through that. I would venture to say that every time we turn, you know, kind of our shoulder against who we really are, like when we're doing this kind of work, when we're going deep, looking, examining, and we don't get there, it's because we came up against a wall of shame. Let me think about that for a second. Not too long. They'll think we stopped say, recording. No, say, say it for me one more time. Like I want to, I, I think I'm, that I'm as, actually like absorbing that. Like, uh, <laughs> taking, it was no, it was deep. I had to like think about I it. I think as we go through this process of really finding who we are and wanting to be ourselves, when we turn our shoulder against our true self or when like, you know, we're on this path and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not going to look at that in me. It's because there's a wall of shame yeah. or a layer of shame. I would totally agree with that. I would totally agree mm-hmm. with that. So we miss out on this true, true self that is probably, I mean, we know the true self is so much more than anything we could ever imagine. We look at that self-actualization, but even getting closer and closer to that and the freedom and the self-acceptance, it's so much more than probably anybody can even ponder until they get there. Yeah. Well, I, I, w- I could, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. So where, where does everyone start? Let's look at the energetics because you're the energy whiz. Where does everyone start in removing the shame? Because it is very sticky energy. Well, if you go back to the the conflict that that creates, like there's an inherent conflict when you're trying to cover up part of yourself and when you're having shame around that, mm-hmm. there's going to be a conflict because there's a part of you that is like trying to do the right thing. And there's a part of you that's like trying to not do the, the mm-hmm. wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Right. So, and those two things are going to fight with one another. Right. So it, it, when, when you're in that place, 
there was a exercise and it's actually, uh, it's on my self-love course. It's mm-hmm. the very first thing I have people do is, is the peace treaty. And you go mm. through a process of basically writing a peace treaty with yourself. So what the peace treaty does in this, for this is, is really actually like, it's profoundly powerful if you take it serious, like mm-hmm. really seriously, you know, mm-hmm. um, is to it is to really look at yourself and recognize where you're in conflict with yourself mm-hmm. and to just like I know it sounds ridiculously simple when you go through the process of writing it it's a little different but but you basically you just stop you just stop that you just lay down the arms and you're mm-hmm. like all right well we're just going to we're going to stop fighting and what you find is that you start to um not make so much of yourself wrong. Mm -hmm. And that opens the door for you to start to um, actually have some respect, some respect for exactly who Mm -hmm. you are and where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. Can you give some context, like an example of how this might work, writing the peace treaty? The peace treaty, like you can... Or when they come up, where they're up against something with themselves and how they maneuver in their mind to lay down the arms. Well, that's, I mean, that's what I mean about taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. Like it's a serious endeavor in the sense that, um, it's, it's not just a throwaway thing that you do once. Like if you're making peace, Mm -hmm. it's something that when you're making peace, like you have to be actively engaged in that process. Mm -hmm. And so it's having the awareness, it's starting to have the awareness of where the negative thoughts, the shaming thoughts, the uh, self-defeating thoughts start to come in where the conflict starts inside of you. Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, I did it again, you know, or you always do that, you know, or aren't you ever going to get it right? You know, like all those kinds Mm -hmm. of things. When, whenever and having, starting to have the awareness of where those things start to show up and then making a new decision for yourself in it. And when you have a peace treaty written with Mm -hmm. yourself, there's an energetic, there's actually an energy, really powerful energetic thing that happens along with that. And, like it's not something that you can easily undo inside of yourself. Mm-hmm. So what the, I mean, on the downside, you'll have a greater level of accountability to your thoughts mm-hmm. and your emotions. On the upside, you'll have freedom. <laughs> that's <laughs> you'll, right. You'll have freedom from that kind yeah. of oppressive thing going on inside of you. So that's kind of how the so peace right, treaty So how works. would you start the peace treaty? You start it however you want. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you can write it really formal. You can write like it. I hereby declare that I am having a peace treaty with myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually a free lesson. In Oh, can we make sure that's in the show notes? Uh, yep. Mm-hmm. We we'll definitely make sure okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, I could teach a whole thing on it, but mm-hmm. but it's the the real value in it is, is just going through it. Mm-hmm. And so when I created the course, I set that as one of the things like it's like a preview. Okay. Kind of cool. Like I like my software. I'm kind of geek out yeah, on it. Geek but out. It, it, anyway, I think that would be helpful. I offered that one as a preview because it's so important. Like everybody okay. should do that. So we'll put the link to that in the show notes. Yeah. Do you have it offhand in your mind? If you go to my membership site, it's uh, themysticacademy.com you'll see there uh, a course in self-love. And if you click on it, then you'll see the, you'll see the lesson. So it's just, it's just to the mysticacademy.com. Cool. I love it. I think that's a great place to start. I'll give my tip. Um, Mine's very simple. (laughs) When shame starts coming in, I actually talk to it. I do this with fear too, but I talk to it as these little gremlins. And I just say, yeah, we're not doing that today. (laughs) We're not going to do that. Like there's something really magical when you just voice. I think it's that conscious mind telling the subconscious, uh-uh, not today. Yeah. And and there's there's like a shift in that. You know, you're you're making and stating a stand for yourself. And I feel like to exit shame, that's what we're doing repeatedly. We're making you're very good, Nick, at saying making the decision. And we just have to make the decision each and every day. Yeah. It, that's that's really the essence of it is mm-hmm. just deciding differently for ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, um, the ways that we can go about that. There's like so many different ways. That's a really great one. You know, it's like, you kind of got to just have fun because if you make your shame wrong, exactly. then you're shaming your shame. Right. And, and then it gets back very and, sticky. It's mm-hmm. the exact same game, you know? So it's, it's really about finding a new relationship mm-hmm. with those things inside of ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, um, I think Gay Hendricks, you know, he put it so beautifully is like, in order to love, to, in order to really love myself, sometimes I have to love myself for hating myself. 
Right. <laughs> you know? Right. In order to get past the shame, like sometimes we have to love ourselves for having the shame and love the shame so that we can get past it and actually right. love ourselves just as we are. Because what we resist persists. That's right. Oh man, always comes back to that. So this is a huge topic. Like we'll probably come back to it again. Mm-hmm. I think um, so. In a different iteration, because mm-hmm. we didn't really even talk about some of the energetics behind it. And mm-hmm. we didn't, and we didn't, didn't talk about like the behaviors that this causes right. and, and the self-sabotaging behaviors that it well, causes. I sense a shame series coming up yeah. next month. But for now, for now, this is a good start. Peace treaty, yeah. peace treaty with yourself. And we're not doing that today. Not doing that today. <laughs> All right, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here at illuminationpodcast.com. Please go ahead and share, rate, review this episode. Um, email us at hello at illuminationpodcast.com. If you have any requests, shares, etc. And until next time, much love and namaste. Peace. Thanks for jamming with us today. And if you enjoy Illumination Podcast, please go ahead and share it with someone you love. Give us a rating, review, download our podcast. And remember, you can find us at illuminationacademy.net forward slash podcasts. Talk to you soon. Namaste.